Right, this is part one of our lecture video series from Wednesday, April 5th, where we discuss how we can describe how acidic or how basic, which I'm calling the alkalinity um, of a given solution. So I want to make a distinction before we talk about the acidity or alkalinity or basicity of a solution by reminding ourselves about how we've talked about like the relative strength or kind of like what you and I think of as acidity so far in this class. So let's remind ourselves of what we use to determine the strength of an acid or base compound. So how strong any given acid or base compound is, is fully dictated by the degree of dissociation between those acidic or basic ions in solution. So for instance, if we have a strong acid or base, then for the acid, we might see something like H with some generalized ion A fully dissociating into H plus and A minus into solution. So full dissociation means that we are strong. For our strong bases, these are our metal hydroxides. So I'm generalizing it as BOH, something with a hydroxide in it. So using our Arrhenius definition of our acids and bases, if we are a strong base, we fully separate into the B generalized cation and then that basic hydroxide anion. And because we have here full dissociation, meaning we separate fully into our acidic and basic particles. Then this means that we are looking at strong acids, things that put H plus in the solution, or bases, things that put hydroxide into solution. Contrast this with how we discuss a weak acid or base. So again, the strength and weakness of an acid or base all comes down to how it dissociates or how well it dissociates in solution. So basically, if you're a strong electrolyte, then you're a strong acid. If you're a weak electrolyte, then you're a weak acid or base, etc. So let's take a look at what this might look like. So for an acid, we have some acid HA, but instead of seeing full dissociation, we see some kind of partial dissociation, meaning that we have this equilibrium that's established between our ions splitting apart in the forward reaction, and then our ions recoupling together to form our compound in the reverse reaction. So this equilibrium that's established here, where we have this kind of forward reverse, forward reverse, forward reverse, dissociate, reassociate, dissociate, reassociate. This is what makes us a weak acid. Now for weak bases, remember weak bases are ones that are a little bit uh, less straightforward to identify compared to our weak acids because weak bases are typically things that put hydroxide into solution via some direct interaction with water. So you're still looking at a partial interaction, so partial dissociation here, but in these weak base dissociation equations, what's happening is we are having water act as an acid to create BH plus. So we're seeing one H from our HOH be donated to B, leaving behind our acid, or sorry, our basic particle hydroxide ion in solution. So here, this is again a partial dissociation because this donation of the H from water to B is partial. So this is what makes us a weak base. 
And in both cases, for weak acids and weak bases, we only see partial dissociation. Now, why are, why are we talking about like the strength or weakness of acid and base compounds when this whole section is titled acid and base, like alkalinity, basicity, acidity of solutions containing these compounds? And the reason is I want to make super clear that the acidity... of a solution is not something that is directly equivalent to the strength of the acid. Same deal with basicity. The alkalinity of a solution does not always mean that if we've got a strong base, we're going to have some kind of high, more basic, higher alkalinity solution. So what do I mean? Let's look at an example. So let's look at an example of I don't know, acetic acid. And hydrochloric acid. And let's look at how we could maybe create solutions of acetic acid and hydrochloric acid that despite having different strengths or being different strengths of acid, right? One being weak and the other being strong. We can create how, like, let's think about how is it we can make a solution of a weak acid that is more acidic than a solution of a strong acid. All right. So here we've got our solutions. Let's look at our acetic acid solution, and I'm going to put let's see here. How about we do five units or how about six units of acetic acid dissolved in solution? So I do see partial dissociation, so I'm going to show how about half of them fully dissociated, so I'll have that's one fully dissociated, that's two fully dissociated, and that's three fully dissociated. And then I'm going to have them coupled for the other three. Just to illustrate that we do understand that there's some kind of partial dissociation happening here. So if I were to go into the solution and count up my number of acidic particles, I would see that I have one, two, three free, totally available acidic particles or hydrogen ions in solution. So let's go back to the original question of what we're doing here with this example. We are trying to figure out a way that we could create a solution of weak acid 
that overall is a more acidic solution than a solution containing a strong acid. So let's think about how we could maybe make a solution of HCl such that it ultimately creates a solution that is less acidic than our solution of acetic acid. So how about we dissolve, I don't know, two units of HCl. So if I were to do that, I know that HCl, hydrochloric acid, is one of our six strong acids, so we have perfect dissociation. And because I only put two units in solution, I see that I have only two, and again, this is an approximation here, but over here, my hydrochloric acid solution, I have two freely available. H plus ions in solution. And let's ask ourselves, which solution has more acidic particles or acidic protons or hydrogen ions present because if we have a solution that has a like high quantity of H plus ions then that's going to be more acidic so our answer here is going to be our acetic acid solution because this has a higher concentration or molarity of H+, which means that we are a more acidic solution. So this solution would be more corrosive. This solution would be more bitter or sour. Don't, please don't ingest acids unless you're told you can. This solution would be a higher irritant to the skin because overall the quantity of what we call an acid, which is H plus, is greater in this solution. Compared to the hydrochloric acid, which we know is a strong acid, in the solutions we made above, because the HCl has a lower or smaller concentration of H plus or acidic particles, this means it's a less acidic solution. And I'm abbreviating solution, S-O-L-N, because we have less H plus, so we are less acidic. So just because we have a solution of a strong acid does not mean that solution is inherently more, more acidic. And same goes for bases. If I have a solution containing a strong base, that doesn't mean that that is going to be inherently a more alkaline or more basic solution compared to a solution containing a weak base. Because ultimately, the acidity or alkalinity of a given solution depends on the concentration of acidic particles or basic particles, so H plus or OH minus ions that are present in solution. All right, acidity or alkalinity depends on concentration. So just because you might have a strong acid 
that doesn't mean that you're always going to create a solution that is more acidic because acidity depends on how much of that acid you have present. So now that we understand kind of the relationship between how acidic and how basic a solution is and how that is inherently something that's related to concentration, let's take a look at how we quantify the acidity or alkalinity of a solution by using something known as pH, and we'll look at the pH scale.